What's your thoughts on the afterlife? I think there's such a thing as reincarnation, whether it be an animal or an insect or even a tree. You know, I think strange about reincarnation is that nobody knows what they were in the life before this life mm -hmm. or the life before the life that they had before that life and nobody knows what's going to be in the next life. Do you know what you were in the last life? I feel like I was a ladybug. I want to believe, but there's something telling me, like, why? Like, I don't know. And what do you want to be in the next life? Maybe a tree or the ocean. A tree? A tree. Let's say someone chops you down. Then you can't be an ocean. The ocean isn't living. But do not believe a word he says. <laughs> That's the voice of that atheist. I interviewed him about a year ago, and he regularly tried to stop people coming on camera. I had his permission for him to be on camera, so I swung it on to him, and at the same time, my faithful dog began licking his face like he was some sort of lollipop. He couldn't handle that, and to save face, he up and left. Um, what do you have to do to come back as a good thing in the next life? Do you have to do something good? I think just stay good to others. And who makes these judgments? Is it God? That's a good question. I would just say a higher power. If not higher power, then our soul itself. So you can make up your mind what you want to be. If I want to be a pink elephant... You could be a pink elephant if you want. Do you think there's something called Satan? He's the one that says, no, no, don't even think about it. He's the God of this world that blinds the minds of unbelievers to the gospel. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. He's the one that incites you to do things you know are morally wrong, mm -hmm. like lying and stealing and blasphemy and looking at pornography. And your conscience says this is wrong, but we do it anyway because it gives us pleasure. Yeah. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah, I guess you are. Do you believe in God? I believe there's a higher power, but straight up from the Bible and Jesus, like the published populated version, not really, but I do believe there's a higher power. So what do you think of Jesus? I mean, he split time in two. We celebrate his birth every year. People stop working to celebrate his birth. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And 2,000 years later, his words get quoted every week by literally millions around the world. So what do you think of Jesus? Not Ever? very educated on Jesus. Let me tell you some of the things he said and get your thoughts on them. He said, your eternity is dependent on what you do with him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he said, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming when all that are in their graves will hear my voice. That's strange words, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Powerful. Are you afraid of death? Not necessarily death, but wasting time. I'd say death was going to come to you tonight at midnight, the Grim Reaper. What would I do? Yeah. I don't know, man. I know what you'd do. What would I do? You'd probably bawl your eyes out and cry out to God, God, help me, I don't want to die, I want to keep this precious life. How about you? You love the blue sky, the sound of birds, the taste of good food, yeah. the sound of music, friends and family, all these things are gifts from God. Do you believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. Is he happy with you or angry at you? I say he's on my side right now. He's on your side? Yeah. He's your friend? Well, he's my friend. He's your buddy? He's my buddy. Do you know what the Bible says? What does the Bible say? He's your enemy. Did you know that? No, I didn't. Why would he be my enemy? Well, let me tell you why. Let me hear it. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Maybe like a... Uh, I know what you're saying. Know. Yeah. You have. In other words, you have. Yeah. It's not on purpose. Yeah. Do you love your mum? Yes. Did you ever use her name in place of human excrement, the S word? Take your thumb with a hammer, you want to express disgust, would you use her name in that way? No. That would be a horrible thing to do. Yeah. And you've taken the name of the one who gave you life, the holy name of God, and used it in place of that filth word yeah. to express disgust. So if anything epitomizes the fact that you're an enemy of God in your mind, it's using his name as a cuss word when he gave you life. How better you have eyes to see with because God gave them to you. Yeah. You have ears to hear with and good music, taste buds, all these, all these things are blessings from God. Right. My grandmother, she's very religious. She always wants me to go to church. Ever since I was younger, she always wanted me to be baptized and be Christian, but... Is that Catholic church? Christian. Okay. So I never really followed that path. Do you know the message of the Bible? No. Old Testament, God promised to destroy death, and the New Testament tells us how he did it. Did you know that? No. I'm going to move from your intellect to your conscience. Can you handle that? <laughs> Let's go. I mean, we're going to think of a time. Can you be honest with me? I have been so far. Okay. Do you think you're a good person morally? Yes. 
So let's go through a few of those commandments and see what's going to happen to you after you die. Do you know what the Bible says death actually is? What is it? Wages. Wages. Yeah, God's paying you in death for your sins. In other words, it's like a criminal stands in front of a judge, he's committed multiple murders, and the judge says, you're in the death sentence. This is your wages. This is your payment. This is what's due to you. And Angelina, sin is so serious in the eyes of a holy God, he's given you the death sentence. Your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. So let's see if he's justified. How many lies have you told in your life? Quite a few. Ever stolen something? No. Have you ever taken anything that belongs to somebody else, irrespective of its value, in your whole life, even if it's small? I may be a pencil. You know, if you open my wallet and just took one dollar out, you're as much a thief as if you took ten dollars out. Right. The value is, is irrelevant to God. Mm -hmm. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Like, oh, I just did right now. Oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what that's called? No. Blasphemy. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Just my girlfriend. So you're having sex with your girlfriend, you don't need to look at pornography because you got the real thing. Is that right? I guess, if that's what you want to say. <laughs> so, I appreciate your honesty. Okay. Well, Alberto, you've earned your wages. You just told me you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicating, yeah. adulterer at heart. So those wages are due to you. Yeah. So if you die in your sins and God judges you by those Ten Commandments, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. If I go to church and confess. That wouldn't help you. It wouldn't help me? No, it's like saying to the judge, I confess, I committed the crime. He's going to say, good, you're going to jail. We've got a confession out of you. You need something more. And if you die in your sins, you're going to be guilty and end up in hell. The Bible says all liars live their part in the lake of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no fornicator, no, mm. no adulterer will inherit God's kingdom. So what can you do to be saved from hell? Do you know? No, I heard like purgatory. No, that's a Catholic doctrine. It's not in the Bible. You do actually know, but you don't value it because you don't understand it. Have you heard of Jesus dying on the cross? Yes. Most people have, but they don't know this. Now, Alberta, if you can get a grip of this, it's going to change everything for you. Mm -hmm. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. I'm as guilty as you. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came and paid our fine. That's why he said, it is finished, just before he died. He was saying, paid in full. Angelina, if you're in court and you've got speeding fines and someone pays those fines, a judge will legally let you go. He can say, you're guilty, but someone's paid your fine, you can leave. Well, God can take the death sentence off you. He can let you legally live forever because Jesus paid that fine on the cross and then rose from the dead and defeated death. And if you'll simply repent of your sins, that's different from confession. You turn from sin. You don't say I'm a Christian, but you fornicate and lie and steal and blaspheme. That's playing the hypocrite, deceiving yourself. And then you trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Mm -hmm. So here's a question for you. If you're going to jump out of a plane 10,000 feet, why would you put on a parachute? So I don't die. And your motivation would be fear. You don't want to die. So that fear is your friend, not your enemy. It's doing you a favor. It's making you put on a parachute. And Alberto, because I love you, I've tried to put the fear of God in you today. I've tried to make you sweat a little and gulp a little to know that you're guilty before God. And if you fall into his hands, you're going to be damned forever under his wrath. Hoping you'll see that fear as your friend, not your enemy. Because it'll drive you to God's mercy and make you let go of your darling sins that have given you so much pleasure. Because you're not going to let him go until you're fearful of you know, what's going to happen. It's like a little kid playing with a stick of dynamite with a lit fuse. Mm -hmm. He's having a great time. <laughs> And you've got to say, kids, throw it away. It's going to blow you in pieces. If he believes it's going to blow in pieces, he'll throw it away. And those sins that so fascinate you and so give you pleasure are going to be the death of you. And you've got to throw them away through repentance and faith in Jesus. And the miracle of conversion is God will change your heart so you love to do that which is right. And that's a miracle because you'll, wanna, you'll say, I, I'm not going to fornicate because God says sex is for marriage and I want to obey his rules. Like when you drive a car. There's rules. If you're on the wrong side of the road because you just want to, you're going to kill someone or kill yourself. And so those rules that God gives us are for our protection. Is this making sense? After a quick lesson, yeah. You mean after what you've just heard, it's making sense? Mm hmm So you're going to think about what we talked about? It's interesting. Okay, I want to move you from it's interesting to oh, my whole life is at stake here. You know, you could die tonight in your sleep, die on the Why way home. I'm questioning it right now. It's just processing, questioning okay, well, like... You know, that's oh. very healthy. But don't question it too long. I'll tell you why. You don't know when you're going to die. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. A lot are young people. And if you and I were standing on the edge of a plane, 10,000 feet up, and we're both going to jump, I had a parachute on, but you didn't, and we're going to jump any second, 
And I said, you're going to put your parachute on? And you said to me, I'm processing information. <laughs> Best thing I can do would be to hang you out the plane by your ankles for two seconds. You'll come back in and say, give me that parachute. And because I care about you, I've tried to hang you out eternity by your ankles just for a few minutes and say, this is, this is your life. It's not just who you're going to marry or what you're going to do for a job. This is your forever. And then examine my motive. I don't get paid to do this. It's uncomfortable for me as it is for you to talk about sin and things like that. <laughs> but I do it because I care about you and I want to see you in heaven, not in hell. So you're going to think about this with a sense of sobriety or urgency? Yes. Do you have a Bible at home? Actually, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's a little dusty, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and your grandmother's a Christian? Yes. And no doubt she's praying for you and you listen today because of her prayers, because she loves you. And so does the God that gave you life. Can I give you a book that I've written? If you'd like. I'd love to give it to you. Do and you it's a, this? Yeah, I write books for a living. That's cool. So can you understand what I'm trying to say today? Yeah, I understand. You going to think about what we talked about? Oh. Yeah, I will think about it. And I'm going to check out the YouTube channel. When are you going to repent and put your faith in Christ? Starting today. Starting today? Yeah. Can I pray with you? Father, I pray for Alberto. Thank you for his open heart today. I pray this day he'll truly repent, understand your love for him, and find a place of true sorrow for his sins and true faith in Jesus and pass from death to life all because of your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Real quick, here are three things to help you grow in your faith. The Living Waters Podcast, the Evidence Study Bible, 200 of the most commonly asked questions of the Christian faith, and much more. The Starter Kit, four of our most popular gospel tracks, available at livingwaters.com.